Hello guys. In this video, I want to discuss into details about the interview because what we want of you is that you go through your interview process successfully. I'll speak of very major and key points regarding the DV lottery interview. And the very, very first major point is that in your second notification letter, it will contain the destination of your interview. It will state the address of the embassy or the consulate for your interview. And in, in that destination details, you'll also see the time of your interview and the date of your interview. So the first important thing for you to do is to make sure that you present yourself on that date and at that time before the consular or the consulate or at the embassy. Don't be late. If your interview is at 9 a.m. or 7 a.m., make sure you are at the location of your interview before that scheduled time. The second important point is that the consular officer will interview you as the principal applicant together with your derivatives or the beneficiaries, your spouse and your children if you have. That is important to note. Sometimes they may interview you alone but some other times, or depending on the consulate or the consular officer, they might interview also your derivatives. The third important tip or thing to do is that ensure during your interview, you come with all the members that are in your application, all the beneficiaries, your spouse and the children, including the adopted children, if you listed them. And on this, I want to emphasize on this important point. It is possible for you to attend the interview alone if you are not intending to relocate immediately with your derivatives. But it is highly advisable if you can make sure you are interviewed with your beneficiaries at the same time and on the same date. Go with them to the embassy. But if it is not possible, maybe you are in one country and your derivatives are in another country and there is no way you can come together, then you can go for your scheduled interview and also talk with the embassy or the consular officer for the planning of your derivatives interview. And the derivatives interview in this case should happen before the end of the fiscal year, and that is 30th of each September. So that year in which you are required to conduct or to go through your interview, make sure September 30th does not reach before your derivatives, they receive their interviews and their visas. Because if it goes past without them receiving their interview, then they cannot relocate or come to live with you in the US. You will have to file a petition for them to join you in later years after you have relocated to the United States. And it will, it will be a lengthy and a tedious process. So remember, if it's possible, come with your derivatives during the interview to be interviewed together. I hope that is clear. Another important thing to know is that if at all you are not able to attend the interview on the scheduled date, you have to call the embassy early enough and inform them 
to reschedule your interview date. But again, the interview date should not go beyond the end of the fiscal year, 30th September. This is very important. Note that in some countries, the visas are exhausted or get exhausted before the end of the fiscal year. So for you to reschedule your interview to a later date might be very risky. With that, I want us now to discuss on the important documents that you need when you attend your interview. And the first important document to come with that you should not leave behind is the appointment letter, the second notification letter. You print it and come with it to the interview as a printed document. The second one that you should not leave is the DS-260 confirmation page. And I will show you this document. This is the confirmation page that you're supposed to print for the DS-260 and present it during the interview. The third document that you should not leave behind are the passports, both for you as the main applicant and the derivatives, the beneficiaries, the spouse and the children. Don't leave them behind. The fourth document that you are required to have with you in the interview are the photos. And these photos, they should meet the requirements of 2 inch by 2 inch in size. And they should be of good quality. The fifth document that you're supposed to present is the medical examination report for all your beneficiaries together with yours. Some medical centers will give you a sealed envelope containing the results that you're not supposed to unseal or to break the seal, but present it as sealed during the interview, while others will send the results directly to the embassy. The sixth set of documents that you're supposed to prepare, they are the documents supporting your DS-260. They are called the supporting documents. These include the work experience document or the education documents and every other documents that you filled in the DS-260, including the marriage certificate, the birth certificates for every individual, the police clearance certificates, for all individuals above 16 years of age in your application. All these support documents that I had done in a previous video that are linked above here, you are required to go with them without leaving them behind to the embassy. Finally, if your language or your documents are not in English translation, then provide the English translations of the documents. And finally, don't forget to carry with you the visa fee. And it is normally 330 US dollars per every individual that is in your application. With that, I come to the end of the video, but if you're a new visitor, welcome and please consider subscribing and liking the video. But if you are a returning visitor, I really appreciate your support. Please like the video and let's meet in the next video.